You are now tuned into CalsoScope. What's going on, Scope fam? It's CalsoScope back for another video. If you guys don't know who I am, I'm currently a professional sports artist with the Yukon Huskies, and I've been designing and creating content recording sports arts for about three years. In this video, what are you gonna see? You guys are gonna be seeing a tutorial, a breakdown, a basis of how I go about photo retouching. Now, what exactly is photo retouching? Photo retouching is allowing yourself to really take apart reality from what you see from right directly down a photo lens, but you're gonna be able to alter this and actually make your photos look more crisp, more to your liking, more animated, whatever the case may be. And I say animated because in sports designing especially, we're starting to see this trend or this wave, or just really we've been seeing it, but it's really at the forefront now where people make their subjects look more animated. And this is uh, because a large part of the Selective colors on the skin, making them look more sharp, more interesting, more a little bit animated, but also it's really in big part to the shadows and highlights. And this is because the contrast between the shadows and highlights starts to make people look more painterly. And this is where you start to see photo retouching that makes you go, oh wow, I wanna try that out. How's he really doing that type of photo retouching? I wonder what method that he's using. But really, I'm gonna give you guys a breakdown of how you can go about it in a pretty standard way so that you'll be able to find your own way and you don't have to ever really like wonder too much about how someone's doing something because you'll be able to experiment by knowing the basics. So without further ado, make sure you guys drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and let's hop right into the tutorial. All right, y'all, so let's get this started. I got my John Morant mask right here, and you notice that I'm just gonna be using this as just reference from what we had originally. So I'm not gonna be really looking at it just for you guys to see originally what we had. Now, I'm gonna be using no plugin, so no Topaz Labs. So I'm gonna be using straight uh, Photoshop stuff. So if you don't have Topaz Labs, do not worry because this is going to be straight uh, Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Filter, Camera Raw, and this is where I like to start if I'm not going to use Topaz Labs. So I open it up and we're in Camera Raw. I was on the long layer, but now I'm going to go right into Basic. And Basic lets you adjust so many different types of things. Now with photo retouching, you don't want to start adjusting like the tints and like temperatures and all that type of stuff. You don't want to start doing that. Uh, just take my word for it. You want to do focus. You want to focus on these types of things here: the contrast, shadows, all these things that aren't going to really adjust the color too much off the bat. Just where you see fit. So if you want to have more highlights pop out, you can bring your whites out. If you want shadows to start coming in, that's where you can start adjusting. So this is where you're going to start adjusting to make your difference between your shadows and highlights. So you guys are going to see. And I'm just going to keep adjusting and when you're doing highlights see you don't want to have too much highlights out blaring because that's going to make the composition or the subject just look like it's not there because you're losing detail see if I bring my highlights up I'm losing a lot of detail so don't lose the plot okay that's the main focus of this thing all right don't lose the plot all right now clarity and texture this is like something that designers are super into uh, boosting the clarity and texture I would definitely say to boost your texture up a little bit, okay? And a little bit of clarity. And then dehaze as you feel, as you feel fit. Then we can like close that basic tab. So you guys know what's going on in the basic tab. Now you have something called noise reduction. And this is what I kind of use at the end. I want to use this right now because I'm going to show you guys what else I do um, before I would go in and use noise reduction. And then yeah, that would pretty much be it for camera. So I'll really, on the first step, just play around in basic and make things balanced and do not lose the plot of your subject. So we're gonna press okay, and that's gonna be our first step. You don't have to do all the steps at once and try to just like rush through everything because you're just gonna get lost. So already you can see our subject already looks a lot better than just what we had originally, it looks a little bit more dynamic, starting to look dynamic. All right, so this is the next important step, and this is something that not a lot of people really actually know about. So this is called select color range. What select color range does is it allows you to choose your shadows or your uh, highlights of your subjects. So we're gonna go to select, and we're gonna go to color range, all right? And now from sampled colors, I'm going to choose my highlights. Now, this range is the range index, okay? so. Anything that is in white is going to be what is selected. Anything that's black is not selected. So if you're gonna be doing your highlights, you wanna just get a nice range that's not too much 
and not too little either. And then your fuzziness is going to be like the feather. Pretty much fuzziness and feather is the same thing. So how feathered is it gonna be? Less fuzziness is gonna be more sharp. More fuzziness is gonna be less sharp. So we'll keep the fuzziness to 20. Eh, we'll go 18 right now. And then I feel like I have a pretty good range. And then after that, I press okay. So now the highlights are selected. Now I'm going to add a brightness and contrast layer, clip it to the layer, and I'm gonna bring my highlights up. You don't wanna bring them down unless you're doing some uh, different type of design, but you wanna bring the highlights up, and now you see we're getting that highlight effect starting to look a little more, more animated as we go, right? And then I click on this layer mask and I usually use a little bit of feather, and this blends it in without me having to use the smudge brush or anything like that. The feather tool is really good on the layer mask. So you just click the layer mask, then you go to the feather. And that's really uh, useful. Okay, so there we go. Then I usually find that it's too much on the jersey, so I'll use a soft brush and I paint black because black hides white reveals. I paint black on the uh, jersey because I find that it's often too much highlights on the jersey and I just really want it to be on the skin. So I paint a little bit of black there. Now we're, I'm gonna do the same thing for the shadows. Also, when you're doing this with the brightness and contrast, don't be afraid to like just kind of see the different blending modes. Sometimes luminosity looks better than normal, honestly. So you could try luminosity. So sometimes it just uh, honestly looks better. I don't know. I mean, it's always good to try out like the different blending modes. Sometimes you're gonna find one that hits. Sometimes you're gonna be like, nope. Now after I get my brightness and contrast sliders all good, I'm just gonna see from here to here big difference already now i'm going to do another thing this is called selective color so add a selective color down here at the bottom selective color clip it yeah we have been clipping everything uh shortcut to clip is you go right underneath the uh thumbnail and you can just hold down alt or i believe it's command on the mac or option and then you're going to click underneath and then with selective color understand that yellow and red are what make up most of the skin tones of a person so we're going to be using these skin tones these uh, sliders yellow and red mainly for the skin and i'm going to just play around on the reds and you see automatically when you turn it to black when you use the black slider it already kind of makes it start looking more like animated a little bit more poppy you know a little bit more fun so just play around with this slider and have fun with it. You don't have to go overboard. If you want to go overboard, you can as well because it's your artwork and I'm not here to tell you what you are supposed to be doing. I'm just here to guide you. But there you go with that. And then if you look back here, like we already getting the John Morant, it looks way more dynamic and designy. Like you can go on the yellows, play around with the yellows a little bit too. Add a little bit more balance just from using some of the yellow. Now something that I usually take liberty in doing is brightening up the eyes. So I just add a brightness and contrast layer, clip it, and I bring my brightness all the way up. Then on this mask, I press Control I to invert it. Then I will go to my white brush. So I'm gonna press X here. This flips your color palette. And then I'm gonna press, I'm gonna brush on with white to uh, reveal. And I always just like to brighten up the eyes. I think it gives it a little bit more uh, oomph to your subjects. Some people change the eye color. We won't be changing the eye color today, but definitely we'll be giving the eyes a little bit more pop. Now at this point, I'd be like, okay, this actually looks pretty solid. I'm, I'm good with it, but you can still do a couple of different things. So you could add a layer, it's called a 50% gray layer. So just go down here, add this new layer, press Shift F5. We're gonna add a 50% gray layer, press OK. And we're going to clip this layer to the mask right here, okay? Now we're gonna set this blending mode to overlay. And now what you can do when you set this blend mode to overlay, it's 50% gray, so it's no, you're not gonna see any difference between the mask because it's just in the middle. But what you're going to finally see a difference from is using dodge and burn, okay? So if I dodge, it's gonna make him brighter. So dodging makes things brighter in areas and burn makes things darker in areas. And you can actually choose your highlights, shadows, and mid-tone areas that you wanna uh, dodge or burn. So if you wanna burn them, some areas make them darker, just go ahead and take your time and do that. You can also, ex you can also bring the exposure up 
So experiment with this and what I like to do, like my key tip here is any areas that are really, really dark that you know are really dark on a person, like underneath the chin or like underneath the nose, I really try to accentuate that um, through this method and I, it does give it a nice feel. Like see, like that already makes a big difference. So you don't wanna go too hard in the beginning because you know it is gonna make a big difference like really quickly. So just be careful when you're doing dodge and burn, but find your groove in this and you, you guys are gonna see me just go through and fix them up a little bit, dodge and burn. selected color I went in over the top on that and I changed a little bit back to more of the reds so now I'm giving him more balance overall for the skin tone um, one other thing that I can take the liberty of just because this is a white jersey is I can desaturate the jersey and I like to do this because it gives the jersey a better feel especially if you're doing like a white composition or a white uh, poster design and you see jerseys have a lot of color in them so I like to just desaturate them uh, when they're white if I can and you already see like how big of a difference that's already making from this subtle like desaturation okay so there goes the desaturation of the jersey now the thing that I want to do is I see that there's blues these blues are really cool but you can also accentuate some of these blues here on the jersey so I'm just playing around on that blue slider of the selective color and yeah, you can move around the blue to something like that. I think that's pretty cool. And then one other thing I might try on selective color is the whites. Maybe just drop the whites down, make them a little bit more darker than highlighted to uh, bring a little bit more contrast to our, our guy, Ja Morant right here. Now I'm just gonna add levels, maybe bring him up in levels. This isn't even really a step. Levels is just, eh, I guess it is another step. Levels is just, you know, it's like the end all be all of everything. Get your levels right, and then you're gonna have a nice, nice mass, right? So just before levels, after. So yes, this is definitely a step. You need to add levels. If you don't know what levels is, this middle slider, if you drag this towards the right, that's getting darker because that's allowing more shadows to come in. Drag it to the left, it's getting brighter because it's allowing more highlights to come in. And then these sliders right here control the highlights as well. So it's a, it's like a balancing beam. So levels is really good. It's like a more can it's a more simplified version of curves. But get used to levels and start using levels a lot. All right, so here we have it. This is our Ja Morant before on the left to the right is after. Definitely think there's a big difference there. So I hope you guys definitely learned a lot from this little tutorial that I put together for you guys. If you did, you guys know what to do. Share with a friend. Drop a like on this video right now. What does it take? Like 0.2 seconds? Drop a like for your boy, man. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know what other videos you want to see from me soon. And until next time, make sure you guys stay scoped. And don't miss the next video where I'll be talking about how you can get any...